This episode brought to you by these awesome patrons and members. It's faster and it's better. Blue SCSI version 2 is here. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. How do you make a great product better? You improve performance, add a bunch of features, and keep the price the same. That's what the Blue SCSI team have done with version 2 of the popular SCSI emulator. Blue SCSI version 2 uses the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller as its base instead of the blue pill of the previous version. This allows for greater performance and future expandability. The code base is a fork of Zulu SCSI's SCSI 2 SD project with several tweaks and enhancements. Blue SCSI version 2 differs from the competition in what it inherits from version 1, a fully open code base and hardware design that anyone can build. The main improvement most people will see over version 1 is bulk performance, with version 2 being able to fully saturate a 10 megabit fast SCSI bus. But under the hood are several cool new features. The blue SCSI toolbox is my favorite new feature. It's an application interface with two major functions. First, it allows you to move files between the host computer and the root of the SD card. This makes transferring from a modern machine much easier, since you don't need an app on the modern computer that can read and modify your SCSI image files. The other function is the ability to change CD images on the fly. This is great for games that use multiple disks. Version 2 supports hot swapping the SD card while powered and attached to the host computer. All you have to do is ensure the host has unmounted all the drives. Then you just swap the card to a new one. Rescan the SCSI bus with a tool like SCSI Probe or SCSI Director, and presto! everything just shows up. After flashing the firmware, there is 1.6 megabytes of open space on the Raspberry Pi. This means you can store a read-only image in this space. I see this being particularly useful as an always available boot image or tools library on an external unit for diagnostics and troubleshooting old machines. Blue SCSI version 2 comes preset with timing and behaviors optimized for classic Macs but it is able to be configured in many different ways by means of an INI file. The Blue SCSI team knows that writing that file can be daunting, so they've launched a website that generates INI files for you. Most people will be just fine with the defaults, but it's good to know that the ability to tweak the system is built in. There are several advanced features available too, like better human readable logs, USB serial logging, and status LED colors better suited to the visually impaired. Just like version 1, the new version will be continually updated to apply bug fixes and add new features. But the coolest thing in my opinion is how easy it is to update the firmware compared to version 1. Flashing the original was a process, using an ST-Link to get the bootloader on it, then switching to USB to do the full firmware after that. Some folks need weird USB drivers to make it work, and some can never get the flasher to see the ST-Link. It, it usually just works, but when it doesn't, boy were you in for some frustration. But the new version is much simpler. You just hold down the button on the Pico, plug in the USB, let go of the button, and then your computer will mount a USB drive. You drag the firmware to the USB storage, and the Pico will update itself, reset itself, and you'll be ready to go. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the elephant in the room. How fast is version 2? Crazy fast! Now, I can't just tell you all the performance numbers and just spout a whole bunch of stuff at the camera, but a picture paints a thousand words, so I'll just show you. 
I've been working with Blue Scuzzy for over a year now, and I've learned a few tricks to keep things running their best. These tricks are even more important now that version 2 is so fast. First off, SD card performance is important. Cheap cards wear out faster, and you don't have great throughput with them. You want to make sure that you use UHS-1 cards and look for ones designed for use in video monitoring systems. They will have better internal wear leveling and greater longevity. Another issue that affects only the Mac world is the disk driver. Different utilities will place different control drivers on your disk image, and these drivers can have a huge effect on performance. Wherever possible, initialize your disk images using FWB 4.5.2, SCSI Director 4, or the drive setup tool that comes with the operating system you're going to use. Future Joe here. I ran into some weirdness with drivers after I recorded all my video bits and found that HDSC setup 7.3.5 tends to cause fewer issues, so maybe use it instead? Anyway, back to past Joe. So what's happening with version 1? Are they outmoded now? Do you need to rush out and replace them all with version 2? Yes! <laughs> Seriously though, no. Version 1 will continue to receive bug fixes and backports of features from version 2 wherever the old platform can support them. And for some older machines like a Mac Plus or an SE30, version 2 won't give you much performance improvement simply because the computer just isn't that fast. But, since the cost of version 2 is essentially the same as version 1, I would expect most vendors to stop version 1 sales as soon as their stock runs out. Final thoughts? Blue SCSI version 2 is the next evolution of an excellent product. It's fast, it's reliable, and best of all, it's the most affordable SCSI emulator out there. Now, in the spirit of the open nature of Blue SCSI, I must admit that I have some bias. I'm an authorized Blue SCSI reseller, so let me tell you why I decided a year ago to sign on to the project. The Blue SCSI community of developers and resellers works incredibly well together, works hard for their customers, and aims to provide a project that will outlast any of them. It's an open, fair, and transparent world. Everyone is open to criticism and input, and they all work their darndest to make Blue SCSI as good as it can be. I endorse Blue SCSI not because I sell them, but because you're going to get an excellent end result every time. Buy from me. Buy from any of the other vendors. Buy all the parts and build one yourself. I don't care where you get your blue SCSI, because what you're going to get, you're going to love, no matter what. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can support the museum over on Patreon or by snagging some merch at jcm-1.com. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.